hi everyone. Here at uh, Intazo uh, 2022 at the Tropic Marin booth, we not only present uh, new products, but also research that uh, Tropic Marin is involved in. And one particular uh, research project that was kicked off three years ago, almost in uh, 2020, uh, is about a reproduction of corals. In that project, it's not just about fragging corals and uh, reproducing them in the old fashioned way as we do in aquarium most of the time, but it's really about closing the life cycle and about sexual reproduction. As most of you probably know, the first time that uh, sexual reproduction has been achieved in, in corals in a closed uh, system in captivity has been a several years ago in England by Jamie Craigs, who really kicked off that whole process of ex situ spawning. And in 2020, we were able to uh, achieve spawning in our facilities in Germany. In this project, uh, we want to uh, optimize the, the methods of reproducing corals in that way, to really upscale production of corals that have been bred from eggs pretty much from a single cell that has been fertilized and develops into a larva and settles. The big difference to fragmentation is that these corals are not clones, like uh, fragments are usually clones of fully developed corals, but uh, corals that are grown from a single cell from a fertilized eggs are all genetically unique. And the number of offspring that can be produced from just a few parent colonies is really mind blowing. So there is still a long way ahead of us in increasing numbers and uh, optimizing grow out. But uh, one of the key aspects of this project is also the settlement of the coral larvae. The planular larvae have a t kind of tiny little hair called cilia with which they can uh, cruise around the water. The place where they settle on, they metamorphose into a primary polyp. And the choice of this spot is really important. So the spot where they settle is where they spend the rest of their lives. And if that choice is a good choice, then that life can be really long. If that spot is not ideal, then that life is over fairly quickly. So we're interested in what makes the larvae settle. And over the past decade, we have been researching this topic quite intensely and were able to isolate certain bacterial strains from the environment. In nature, the coral larvae like to settle on the calcareous red algae. And on these red algae, you have a certain bacterial community. And some of these bacterial strains release certain uh, chemical compounds. We call them infochemicals. They carry information about where they come from. Pretty much. So the coral larvae can detect these uh, chemical compounds and then they know, okay, here's these bacteria growing. That means there is the calcareous red algae and where the calcareous red algae are growing, you got uh, good water flow, you got light, you got good water quality. So it's not a bad place for a coral to settle on. So what we do and plan to do in the future is to utilize these bacteria that we can grow in the lab and are growing in the lab. Recently, we were able to identify this compound that is produced by the bacteria and makes the coral larvae settle. So now we want to implement that finding into an artificial settlement substrate that allows us to settle planular larvae in a target way. So and as, aside from the settlement, we also look at optimizing the grow out of the juvenile corals to really um, try and get as many of these um, genetically unique uh, offspring to, uh, to a certain size. So in the background of all that is the problematic position that our beloved coral reefs are in right now. I mean, all of you know that coral reefs worldwide are in a really tough spot and are declining rapidly. So Tropic Marin and uh, our working group at the university kicked off that project with the aim to develop methods to really produce corals also for reef restoration, so we can contribute and maybe combat the, the problems that, that reefs are currently going through. In a changing environment, you need the population of corals, for instance, in a coral reef, uh, to adapt. And that only works if there's always new offspring coming in and adapting to the slightly different conditions. So the only way we see that coral reefs might survive into the future is if there's always enough juveniles um, that are in the reef and carry that, that hope of uh, maintaining coral reefs.